What's up guys, welcome back to the channel and to another weekly 3D model. This week we're going to be modeling some storage props. It's basically just a bunch of boxes, but to make it a little bit more fun and interesting, I thought that these boxes and filing cabinets could be containing top secret confidential information about some of the biggest conspiracies around the world. Just like the JFK assassination, UFOs, and all the above. So without further ado, let's just get started. Alright, so to start it off, I'm going to select the cube and start blocking out the main shapes. I'm going to start off with the filing cabinet and then work my way to all the other objects, just because it's one of the larger objects in the scene. Now, I just dove into this and started modeling it. I really didn't think about how I was going to plan this out. So I'm basically creating this filing cabinet a little bit backwards. Normally, I would just create a cube on the bottom, add a few edge loops, and then select those faces and extrude them up so I have all the walls. I didn't know how I was going to build this filing cabinet, so I started with the walls and kind of did it backwards. So I'm basically showing you a more typical way to create a filing cabinet, but that's just the nature of not planning out my videos and just starting these on the weekends. So it is what it is, but let's just start blocking everything out. I'm not going to talk too much throughout this whole video. I want it to be more of a time lapse, but I will be jumping in here and there just to kind of give some tips or some pointers to explain exactly what I'm doing. But other than that, I'm going to let this first part play out as all I'm doing is just blocking out the main shapes of the filing cabinet. And then I can start working on some more smaller pieces like the drawers and all the little pieces on the side.
right, so now that that first drawer is all modeled up, I can basically take it, group it all together, and duplicate it to create all the other drawers. Now for the bottom three, just because you can't see the inside components, I'm not going to add those, and I'm just going to use that plane for the front face of the drawer, because there's no point of having all those unnecessary polys sitting inside if they're not going to be used and seen. So then next up, I'm going to start offsetting some of these little panels to make it look a little bit beaten up and used, like it's been sitting in the basement of a like Pentagon or somewhere for decades, holding all these secret documents. I just don't want it to feel like it's brand new and in pristine condition, so, but also not completely abandoned and like pieces falling off. So I'm just going to go through and start offsetting some of these objects. So the first filing cabinet is looking pretty good. Now I can just use this exact same model to start creating the second one. Alright, so the filing cabinets are all complete, now it's time to move on to those large cardboard boxes. So to do that, I'm going to go ahead and select another cube, and I can delete all those top faces, and then I can start extruding some of those edges, just to create a box that's kind of closed and folded in on itself. All I have to do is just start selecting some of these edges and some of these verts, and start just changing the angle of these top faces so it looks like they're folded in on one another. So I'm not going to make these boxes too high in poly, but I am going to add a few edge loops to help make it look a little bit more realistic where those flaps fold in on themselves. Once I'm happy with the shape, I can go ahead and select all the faces and then extrude it to give it a little bit of thickness. Now this isn't completely necessary, you could probably get away with keeping it one face and one sided, but just to make it look a little bit more realistic, especially in those areas where the flaps are folding in on themselves, I do want to create a little bit of thickness. Now what you could do is delete all those interfaces as they're really not necessary and it will save you on the poly count, so if you are looking to create a lower poly model, that's probably the next step I would take. 
but I just don't do that and I just keep modeling it. So just keep that in mind depending on what your prop's gonna be used for. And one thing I am gonna do is keep rotating the box in different angles as I'm duplicating it around the scene. That way when I start texturing it in Substance Painter, since it's gonna be the exact same box with the exact same UVs, I don't want it to look repeating. So the more you can change the angle and position, the more realistic it's gonna look like you have a variety of different boxes rather than one box that's being duplicated a couple times. Now for those smaller cardboard boxes, this is going to be pretty straightforward. I'm just going to create two cubes, one for the bottom and one for the lid. And I can just go bevel some of those edges and add a few edge loops so I can delete some of those faces for the handles that are on the sides. And once we're done that second box, we can go ahead and start duplicating it a few more times to create some more boxes in my scene. Now, this would be a good time to actually UV the box before I start duplicating it. Just for the sake of the video, I'm not going to do that to make it a little bit shorter, but normally if I wasn't recording myself, I would just quickly UV this box just to save myself from redoing work down the road. Alright, so next up is creating those plastic crates that hold the other files and paperwork. Now to do that, I'm going to go ahead and select another cube and start blocking out that shape, similar to how we did the cardboard boxes. So my reference image I think is a milk crate from a gas station, I'm not exactly sure, but it has all these rivets that go around the top and the sides, and I could have faked this a lot in the textures later on in Substance Painter, but I got a little bit carried away and started adding a few extra cubes and then scaling those really small and beveling them out. So I created a lot of unnecessary polys and I probably could have faked this out in Substance Painter, but like I said, got a little bit carried away here, so it is what it is. And here I just forgot to select these faces when I extruded them, so I'm going to have to go and delete some of these faces and I can re-bridge them together. And now that the box is fixed, I can go on to continue adding these rectangles around. Now keep in mind this is not necessary, you can fake this in the texture, but, but it just makes it look a little bit more realistic, so I decided to do it. 
Alright, so now looking at my model, I realized that the reference had handles on all four sides and my model only had them on two. So to add those two extra handles, I'm just going to go ahead and duplicate the same object I created and I can select all those faces where the handles are and then I can go mesh extract to separate them from the object and I can just delete the other objects now I have two handles. So all I have to do is group those together, rotate them, that way they're in the right position where those missing handles are on my original crate. And then it's just a matter of deleting those other faces on my model and combining these two objects together. So now I have four handles and then I just need to bridge those two edges together. Alright, so now that the crate is temporarily complete, I do come back after and refine it and work on it a little bit more because I wasn't happy with it, but it's good for now. Let's just move on to the objects that are inside of it. Now for my reference, I quickly googled just office supplies and I saw this leather booklet that was holding all these papers and I thought that would be a good idea. And then right beside that was another little piece of paper. It looked almost like a record, but it was just a piece of paper that was holding other papers inside. So I decided to take these two objects and just block those out and use these as the objects that fill up my crates. Alright, so now I have my two crates with office supplies, I can go and now position these in my scene. Alright, 
So now I want to add a few pieces of paper that are just scattered around the scene. So I'm going to go ahead and select another cube. I can scale that nice and small and then start just positioning those in random areas. I do want some on the floor and one on the box. So for the one on the box, I'm going to add a few extra edge loops so I can basically just create an illusion like it's bent and gravity is just basically weighing the paper over the edges. And then I'm going to select the same piece of paper and then just duplicate it and scale it nice and small to create a couple Polaroid picks that are also going to sit right here on top of the box. Alright, so it's slowly coming together. I'm just going to jump back to that first filing cabinet we created and I can start refining those shapes that are inside that drawer. I basically want some documents that can sit on those outside metal edges. So I'm just going to refine those shapes a little bit just so those pieces of paper can actually sit on them and then I'm going to add all those documents and paperwork that are inside of the drawer. Alright, so now for the paperwork, I'm just going to go basically create these two folders that are going to have a bunch of papers that are inside. So starting off with a cube that's nice and thin, I'm just going to add a few edge loops so that I can extrude a little flap, a little edge here that I can add little labels. And then another little cube that's scaled nice and thin that's going to be the paper that's sitting between them.
So now that I have one folder complete, I'm just going to take the same object and duplicate it a few more times so I can fill up the drawer. And now would also be a good time to UV this object before duplicating it. I'm obviously not going to do that just for the sake of the video, but keep that in mind to make your workflow a little bit quicker. I would definitely UV it before duplicating it. And I'm just going to randomly select these folders and just position them, give them different gaps between them to make it look a little bit more realistic so they're not perfectly aligned with one another. Alright, so now all those documents are inside of our filing cabinet, it's probably important that we lock them up since they contain some pretty confidential top secret information. So we're going to go ahead and select a cylinder and I can block out a little lock that's going to sit on the top of the filing cabinet. So all I'm going to do here for the lock is just fill in this hole, I can select a cube and then boolean out a little square, and then with the multi-cut tool I can go select and attach all of those vertices. Alright, so the scene is coming together. I just want to add a different variation of large cardboard box and I want to have one that's actually folded and still taped together. So I'm going to duplicate over one of those cardboard boxes, delete all those upper faces that are all folded in on each other. That way I can do the exact same process selecting those edges and extruding them. But rather than folding on one another, they're just going to evenly come together so I can add another plane to act as a piece of tape that's actually going to sit right on top of it. And then same thing we did before, I'm going to select all the faces and extrude them to give them a little bit of thickness. And then I can go ahead and just bevel one of these little edges on the top of the cardboard box and as well as the edges that are on the tape so it looks like they fold around the box nicely. That way in Substance Painter later I can add a transparent material that's on top of this piece of tape so it looks like a transparent specular see-through piece of tape that's over top of the cardboard box. And then I'm just going to go position this box into my scene. Alright, so next up is creating those little post-it notes that are on the side of my other filing cabinet. So I'm just going to go create another plane and I can scale that very nice and small and start positioning those on the side of my cabinet. Alright, so now jumping back to those plastic crates so we can go finish those up. Now, I saw in my reference that the handles were actually square, and I originally beveled them and I didn't like that, especially because I wanted to add a little border around them. So, I'm going to go ahead and select, just like we did the other handles, I'm going to select my ones that are not beveled. That way I can just duplicate those over, rotate them, and reattach them to my crate. And then I'm just going to go in and start refining this crate a little bit more. I believe my reference was showing a milk crate, but it had a few extra little details and I thought it would be cool to make it a little bit more realistic. So I'm going to go add a few extra polys and 
just refine the shape a little bit more, but keep in mind if you are going to use this in a game or you're going to try to keep this on the lower poly side, I probably wouldn't add a lot of these extra polys and I would just fake this on the material. So keep that in mind, but let's go fix this crate a little bit. Alright, it's looking a little bit better and I can worry about replacing the other crates when it comes to the UVing, so I'm just going to leave this alone and move on to some other things. And one of those things that I thought would make the scene look a little bit better was having an open box on the side. So I'm just going to go duplicate over one of those white smaller cardboard boxes we created earlier. And then I can just go hollow it out and create to basically just move the lid to the side so I can add a few objects on the inside of it. Alright, so I think we're good to go. I'm just going to go add one little cylinder on the side of my drawer. I see that there's like a little bolt or something here. So once we're done adding that, I think we're good to jump into substance and we can start texturing. Alright, so now jumping over to Substance Painter, I'm going to go load in my FBX from Maya. Alright, so once the model's loaded in, I can quickly take a look at the UV maps to make sure everything's looking good and there's nothing overlapping. But things are looking pretty good, so I can go down to Texture Set Settings and go to Bake Mesh Maps. And I can choose my output size, I'm going to choose 4K, and then make sure to check that use Low Poly Mesh as High Poly Mesh, and then we can bake out our textures. Alright, so now we can start texturing. I'm going to start off with the filing cabinets and I'm going to go select one of those smart materials and start tweaking some of those settings.
Alright, so the first filing cabinet is done. I'm going to go select another smart material to apply to my second filing cabinet. And then just go tweak some of those settings to find something I was happy with. I wasn't completely satisfied with my filing cabinet, so I'm just going to go select another smart material so I can try a few others. Alright, so next up was the cardboard boxes. Now I found some of these materials on the Substance Source website, so you can jump on there and download them and add them to your Substance library if you'd like. But they're really good cardboard textures, I just have to apply those and change the scale, and then bring down some of those ripping and tearing effects because I don't want them looking too beaten up. And then it's just a matter of tweaking some of those settings like the colors until I found something I was happy with. Alright, so next up was jumping to those pieces of tape that are on the cardboard boxes. So to do that, I'm going to go ahead and select this duct tape texture, which I also downloaded off the Substance Source website if you want to reuse it. And I'm going to go ahead and apply that to those meshes. So once that duct tape is applied to that mesh, I'm going to go select that same cardboard material that's applied to the box. I'm going to reassign it to that piece of tape as well. But I'm going to make sure that it's below the duct tape so the duct tape is sitting above it in the layers. That way when we make it transparent, you can actually see that same cardboard material and that same bump effect and those wrinkles that are also showing on the tape. So it looks like it's actually sitting on top of the box. So to do that, we have to add an opacity channel. So we're going to quickly jump up to the right corner to our shader settings, and I'm going to change our shader to alpha blending. That way it will actually allow us to add that opacity channel to our material. So once we add that channel, you're going to see our tape go see-through, and then it's just a matter of tweaking those settings, like bringing down the specularity so that it looks a little bit more shiny, and then just tweaking a few of those settings so I found something I was happy with. Alright, so I want to add a few extra details. So one of the things I want to add a little shipping label on the side of one of these boxes. So I quickly jump onto Google, just Google the shipping label, and then I just save that as a PNG. And then I just basically drag that right into my substance file, set that as a texture and to my current session. And then I can just basically create a new layer and project that image right onto my mesh. Now I projected this right in my 3D view, so as you see it came off a little crooked. So I'm just going to go repaint this on in my UV maps, that way it comes out nice and straight. And then same thing with these classified labels, I just make a new layer, I basically assign a plastic material and then change it to a black mask and then choose an alpha that's already in Substance Painter and then just type the word classified and I can paste that right onto my box. And then next up was the smaller cardboard white boxes. So it's the exact same process as the larger brown ones we just created. I'm gonna go ahead and select another cardboard material, apply that to those meshes, and then just tweak some of those settings, like bring down some of those ripping effects and change the specularity a little bit. And then obviously change it to white. And 
then next up was the plastic crate and that's the same process. I'm gonna go ahead and select another smart material, one of the plastic ones and I can assign it to that mesh. Next up is just applying materials to those objects that are inside of those plastic crates. Now I'm not going to worry too much about these objects since they're so small in the scene. I'm just going to go ahead and select some smart materials that already come with Substance Banner and then assign it to those meshes. I don't know if you guys noticed this earlier in the video, but this crate was a little bit messed up. There's a weird plane here. So I have to quickly jump over to Maya so I can fix it and then just re-import this model. So after using the project configuration setting and reloading my FBX, now I just have to rebake this texture since I rearranged some of these objects after basically fixing this one up. But things are looking better now so I can continue on. So for the rest of these labels and pieces of paper, I just basically hopped on Google and found various classified top security documents or UFO related images. And for all the Polaroids, I just found some like JFK random images or UFO pictures, just random conspiracy related things online. And I just saved those all as images and I just dragged these all into my project and set them as textures and then I can just project them right onto my meshes. So for the next little bit, I'm just going to go through all of those pieces of paper and labels and just add these textures and these images that I found on Google to them. So this project blue book document was looking very bright. The reference photo was just very light in color and I wanted to darken it. So I quickly just right clicked and set a levels to it and just tried adjusting that base color, but it was just looking a little bit off. So I just did a really quick, lazy, also efficient way of just changing the color. So I basically just signed that same leather material to it. And then to that graphic of the project blue book, I just set that to an overlay and then changed the color of that leather material just so I have a little bit of a darker white color and it's not so bright. And it gives it a little bit of texture, but I obviously could have just quickly jumped into Photoshop and then just like changed the color of the image there, but just made it a little bit quicker for myself just to do it this way.
Now for the image inside of this box, I ended up finding this photo from the Roswell incident when the UFOs crashed or whatever happened, they say weather balloon, but you know, I'll leave that up for you to decide. Either way, they had this photo of some of these generals holding the material that they found, and I ended up changing this to uh, just a newspaper document at the very end, just because it looked a little bit more fitting, but I could have obviously gone with this one, I just changed this one up at the end, so if you do notice a quick difference in that final render, that is why. Same with these little labels on the filing cabinet, I could have, and what I should have done realistically was just jump into Photoshop and made my own, but I really didn't have a lot of time. I'm doing this over the weekend and it was a pretty busy weekend, so I only had a few hours to get this one done. So I just found a random label on Google. Don't even ask me what this is. I was trying to even figure out exactly what this label was for, but since you're not going to see it and it's so small in the renders, I just said, whatever, screw it. And we're just going to add these ones. So I ended up just going with this image and just copying and pasting this right onto all those labels. So for all of these labels that are inside the filing cabinet, I just basically assign a plastic material, right click, set that to a black mask, and I can find an alpha that was already in Substance Painter to make my life a little bit easier. I just found some words that were relatively fitting, and I just wrote in some various conspiracies like the JFK, uh, the moon landing, UFOs, just various things, and just pasted them onto these labels.
And next up was jumping through those sticky notes. So I just found a paper, lined paper material on Substance Source website that's already downloaded into my library. And I just assigned that to that mesh. All I have to do is just scale it nice and small, remove all the colored lines and the punch holes. And then just change it to that color, like the sticky note yellow color. And then once I was happy with that, I just basically quickly jumped into Photoshop and I created my own, just a few random labels. And I didn't know what to do for the other sticky notes, so I just hopped on Google, just like the other ones, and found an image of some random notes that are very unrelated to anything in the scene. But since it's so small, you're not going to be actually able to pick up what those words are. So I didn't bother dealing with it. And just my limited amount of time left on this project that I just decided to say, screw it, and let's go with this. So it is what it is, but if I had some more time, Making your own images that actually are related, maybe some cool notes about a specific event in time or something about maybe coronavirus or something just related would have made it that much cooler and I could have done a nice close-up render of that, of those sticky notes. You get all these ideas out obviously after when I'm done the model, but like I said, I was limited with time so I just found some images on Google and I just pasted those right onto the sticky notes. And then same here, really quickly on the side of the filing cabinet, it was looking a little bit plain and I wanted to add something extra. I originally wanted to do some nice engravings and stuff, but I thought being a government related filing cabinet, I probably wouldn't be engraving things into it. But I thought maybe a marker would be a little bit more fitting. So using the plastic material that we used before, I'm going to go ahead and change my brush to a marker brush. And I can just type in or write in some random numbers on the side and change that color from a bright blue to black, just so it adds something a little bit small and a little extra on the side. And then I'm going to do the exact same thing to the boxes and add a few extra marker details. Alright, and then quickly jumping into the render to see how things are looking, I'm just going to bring that floor plane up so it matches the bottom of my objects. And then I just realized I missed a few other pieces of paper, so I'm going to go tackle those really quickly. And then I also wanted to make my cardboard box a little bit more reflective so that light would be hitting off of it and you can see those indents and those details a little bit more. So all I'm going to do is select that cardboard texture, right click and select level. And then I'm going to change it from base color down to roughness and then I can basically slide the slider depending on how rough or how much specularity I wanted to show on the material. And the boxes were looking a little bit too clean. I know they do have that dirt slider that I did increase, but I thought the bottom of the boxes should be a little bit dirtier than the tops. So using another plastic material like before, I'm going to go choose a dirt brush and then just paint on a little excessively this blue color. And then I can go with the eraser tool after and bring some of that back. And then I can just change the color to a black and change the roughness just so it looks like there's a little bit more dirt on the bottom of the boxes. And then jumping back into the renderer, I can take another quick look at how things are looking. And I'm just going to spend the next little bit just tweaking a few colors and a few other settings.
And after looking at the model, I realized that the left filing cabinet was looking just a tiny bit too plain compared to everything else. So I thought it'd be cool adding a few like torn off labels that were on top of some of these drawers. So once again, jumping back onto Google, I just found some torn sticker images. Save those as PNGs and I can just drag that right into my file, set that to a texture into the current session. And then I can just paste those directly right onto my mesh. And then quickly with the eraser tool, I can just go ahead and clean it up. classic move for myself. I wasn't satisfied with how everything was looking. I just thought that those little white boxes on the right were looking a little bit too plain. And there was a label on the side of it, but it wasn't really being picked up from this front angle. So I quickly jumped back into Maya, just duplicated that same label over to the front of the box. And then I'm just going to quickly go apply a mesh, some paper, some paper document similar to the other ones, just so I can paste right onto that piece of paper. Alright, so once again, quickly jumping into the render to see how things are looking and all those labels that we pasted onto the front of that filing cabinet looked a little bit bright. So a really quick fix is I'm just going to go assign that plastic material to it and then change it to a black and then bring down the opacity just quite low. So it's just like a really quick lazy way of making those labels a little bit darker. And then I'm going to do the exact same thing with another material just on that label on the very far left. It's looking a little bit bright. So to match the other ones in the scene, I'm just going to go darken it up a little bit. And that's about it folks. That's the whole modeling and texturing process that I did to create this top secret classified documents. Hope you guys liked this week's video. If you did, give it a like and don't forget to subscribe to the channel to see more weekly 3D content. Also, let me know in the comments if there's any conspiracies that you believe in or you think that the government's hiding from us. But other than that, thanks for tuning in and I'll see you guys in the next one.